To assess the normality of our sample data, we're going to introduce a new tool, a new type of graph called a QQ plot, where the QQ stands for quantile quantile. So we just shorten that to QQ plot. <clears throat> what a QQ plot does is depicts our actual sample data versus the theoretical normal quantiles. So what that means is it's depicting our sample data versus what our sample data should look like if it was coming from a perfectly normal distribution. So along the x-axis here, we'll have the theoretical normal quantiles. And then along the y value, uh, or I'm sorry, along the y-axis, we'll have our sample data. So we'll see these points that are generated by comparing those two different values, our quantiles with our sample data. And there will be in red a line of best fit that's coming up with the best approximation of that straight line pattern. If our data follows that straight line pattern that we see, then our data comes from a normal population. So essentially we're saying on the x-axis we have our expected values, what we think we should see if it was perfectly normally distributed, and then on the y-axis our sample data. So if those match up to be this straight line pattern exactly, then our data is coming from a normal population. If it's not a good fit for that straight line pattern, that means our sample data is not fitting with our expectations. It's not matching up with that straight line pattern that we should see. It means our data comes from a non-normal population. So we don't know specifically what type of population, what the shape is, we just know it's something that doesn't meet the requirements or the standards for a normal distribution. So let's take a look at some examples of constructing some QQ plots. What we're going to do first is construct a random set of normal data values. Then we're going to construct a random list of data that don't come from a normal distribution to see what those QQ plots look like. So in StatCrunch, we can go to data, simulate, and then normal. And this will allow us to construct a list of randomly generated values selected from a normal distribution. So in this case, we want, say, 100 different data values. We want one column. And we'll go with a standard normal distribution, so our mean is 0, standard deviation is 1. We'll click Compute. And now we get this new column that's added to our table. So to construct our QQ plot, we'll go to Graph, select QQ plot, and then select the variable that we wanted to pick. So we calculate that graph, and what we see is all of our data values graphed, again, with the expected normal quantile, so what we should expect to see if our data is coming from a normal distribution, and then our data, the actual sample data that we generated. So on the ends, we see some values that are kind of a little different from this straight line pattern. They're kind of veering off at the extremes there. But the bulk of this data follows this straight line pattern incredibly well. So if we have a normal distribution, that's what we should expect to see. And we could even take this a little bit more extreme if instead we simulated our normal distribution and say got a thousand different data values. So now we can construct a QQ plot for that second list of data we generated. So the larger our sample, the better the fit we see, because we're dealing with data that does, in fact, come from a normally distribution, normal distribution, um, because we told StatCrunch to generate that list by selecting data from that normal population. So this is our sort of almost perfect example of our data matching up with that line that we would expect to see. So getting that really strong fit between our sample data and that line of best fit. Now what we're going to do is simulate data. Uh, we're going to pull data from a distribution that's not a normal distribution. In this case, a chi-squared distribution, which isn't something that we've introduced before, um, but it's enough to know that what we're dealing with is data that's just not normally distributed. Uh, for this value for df, 
we're just going to plug into. Again, not too concerning what that means. Um, all that's important to know is that the values that we just generated in our third column here aren't coming from a norm normal distribution. So when we construct this QQ plot, we should see some values that are very different from that straight line pattern. And in this case, it's pretty easy to see that. What we have is more of this curve, kind of a parabola shape that obviously isn't matching up very well with that straight line pattern. So the two graphs we just looked at, those are definitely extreme examples. So we took really large sets of data. We knew that one came from a normal distribution, one didn't come from a normal distribution. So in those extreme examples, we had one that was almost a perfect fit, the other that was clearly not a straight line pattern. In other cases, though, it's going to be less clear whether or not our data fits that straight line pattern. So we'll end up with things, you know, if we only have 10 data values, 15 data values, it's going to be harder to see that pattern and whether it is a really strong fit or not. So this means interpreting a QQ plot can be somewhat subjective. Two people could look at that graph and potentially come to two different conclusions. So what we want to do is enhance this method, make it a little bit more objective so that we have a very clear-cut answer. Either we're concluding our data is normal or concluding it's not normal. So in order to do that, we'll introduce a correlation statistic to that plot. And this correlation statistic is going to help us answer the question, how good is good enough? or how well are we fitting to that straight line pattern. So when we introduce the correlation statistic, we'll get a value at the top. So for instance, for this graph that I already generated here, it'll include correlation equals, in this case, 0 0.988. So that's a very good fit because this value is very close to 1, which matches up with what we're seeing here. If we flip back over to StatCrunch and look at this data that came from a non-normal distribution, we can select options and edit to go back to that menu, and we'll add a correlation statistic. So in the graph that I already had on the notes, we had a correlation of 0.988, so very close to 1. Here we have something that's not a very good fit for this normal dis or for this straight line pattern, and we have a correlation of 0.881. So it's not incredibly close to 0. It's actually closer to 1 than it is to 0, but we're getting a value that's farther away from 1 than what that original value was. So we can calculate this correlation. That's going to tell us how good that fit is. But we still need to answer the question of how good is good enough? How close does that correlation statistic need to be to 1 in order for us to conclude that our data comes from a normal population?